Hey everyone, this is Marbos here and this is part 1 of the new Civilization 5 Gods and Kings game. This time I will be playing China, as you can see. So you can already guess, I will be having quite a few wars in this game. <laughs> anyway, I've been thinking about how to make this game different enough from the other ones. And I decided to play a boreal map, which is a, mostly a Tanja type map, with a lot of plains, Tanja terrain and so on. So this isn't really a good map for big cities, not at all. And it should make the game different enough. It's also a flat map, by the way. I'm going to set the world age to 3 billion years. It's already on that. And resources to legendary start. Everything else is on default. I'm still playing on emperor level. I think that's the best at this point. So let's get started. I'm also playing uh, with the red mod pack enabled which is Regiment and Ethnic Blessings Diversity, uh, which Empress is mostly a visual Zutian, type of mod. You might know it. It rescales time. most of oh, the units, scales it down for the most the part. So normal giant infantry units you and such. It changes lots of formations. Uh, it adds a lot of new unit models for diversity. There's no actual gameplay change. This is simply a visual mod that changes units and that's it. It's quite a good one, though. I like it. Right, so, wow. That's a pretty good starting location. At least, considering the map type, it's pretty good. Planes with River is about as good as it's going to get on this map. And I have two wheat in range of my capital. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, I feel like one of the more important things on this map is going to be the Pantheon. I mean... There are two obvious choices, which is plus one faith from Tanja without forest, and also plus one food from camps. There are going to be a lot of deer hexes around here. So these seem to be the top two picks. I feel like I should try grabbing my pantheon as fast as I can to get one of these before someone else steals it. So that's going to be the general plan. I will be going for liberty policy, that's usually what I do in most of my games. The free settler and free worker are just so good in the early game. So that's what I'm going for. I'll probably go straight for the settler first, then get the first worker in my capital, then second worker from the social policy. And here's the first barbarian camp already. I'll have to get rid of that, that's a bit close to my capital. But there's no rush to do that just yet. I need to explore my immediate surroundings. I have a bad tendency to send one unit really far away without exploring the area around me. But I'll try not to make that mistake this time. <laughs> I totally do it in almost every game I play. But hey, I still don't want to send at least one scout further away to find other civilizations to trade with. I need to do both. Both explore the area around me to find good city spots and find other civilizations. And I already see my second city spot, which is going to be on the river near the gold. That's a pretty good location too. But yeah, I kind of want to start my second city fairly fast, so I can get the second shrine and then grab the second pantheon as fast as I can. So I might actually just go straight for Settler in my capital. But yeah, Scout first. I feel like going for Settler instead of Worker might work out better in this case. So I might do exactly that. Then I can get the Worker from the Social Policy and delay that second Settler a little bit. I don't want to get two shrines done as fast as I can. Anyway, I'm going to need mining, so let's get that. Right. I'm going to grab Settler after this scout in my capital and grab my first worker from the actual social policy. Oh hey, natural wonder, nice. What's the yield on that? Two gold and three science. Hmm, that might be decent. Perhaps I should grab that. 
If it's close to a river, I'm definitely going to grab that. No neighbors so far. I don't actually want any neighbors too close to me. I don't want any early wars, definitely not. Early wars slow down expansion a bit too much. Yeah, this is going to be a really good city location. It will be a bit far from my capital for a second city, but I'm definitely grabbing this spot with the wonder and with the gold on the river. Okay, so let's go maybe shrine first. Yeah, let's get shrine first and then settler right after that. That's only six turns, not a big deal. Maybe I can speed that up a bit. Yeah, I can. Okay, so... Oh yeah, I need to adopt liberty in the first place, right. Oh, another ruin over here. And my warrior got upgraded to spearman, nice. I wonder who my neighbors are going to be. Depending on who I get as a neighbor, my game plan might change quite drastically. <laughs> Especially if I get an aggressive civilization with warmongering tendencies. Then I'll have to prepare for war earlier than I would otherwise. I usually don't really go for war until I get physics and trebuchets. I mean, I'll defend myself if I get attacked, but I don't start an actual offensive war until I get physics, in most of my games at least. Catapults aren't too bad, but trebuchets are just way better. Especially if you beeline for them. Which I do if I play an aggressive domination game. I'm not sure if this is going to be a domination game, but it's not going to be a peaceful game. Anyway, I think I need masonry. Yeah, I need masonry to get the marble. I also need trapping to get the deer. So, I think I'll go for trapping first. I want to improve all the tiles that give extra food first. Okay, and I can get the luxury resource from the silver anyway, so there's no rush to get masonry yet. Right, I'll go for trapping. And reveling horses might be nice too. If there are horses somewhere around this area, this will be an even better city location. Okay. Would also be nice getting a quest to destroy a barbarian camp from the city-state, then I could get some free influence with it and ally myself with it. That would be good. Okay, let's grab the settler. Right, I don't want to go too far north with that spearman. And I need to explore east of my capital now. Let's do that. I'll use the scout for that. And a bit south, even though this is the end of the map. But there might be something interesting south. Yeah, let's send him east. I'm tempted to explore further north to find some civilizations. Actually, there is something over here. I think that's civilization board. Oh, that's Napoleon. Really? Seriously? Napoleon is this close to me? Oh no, is that his border or just his scout? Oh, there's no border here. Oh, that was the river. Derp. But yeah, Napoleon is on this map. I don't like that. I'll have to crush him before he becomes too strong. I'm not a big fan of Napoleon after that Inca game. <laughs> I'm not going to let him get too strong, definitely not. That might actually be good that he's relatively close to me, so I can crush him faster. But I hope he's not too close to me. Oh nice, ruin. Okay, so, right. Hold on a moment. I'm already building a settler in my capital with 8 turns left so i'm going to grab citizenship for free worker i think that's going to be better choice in this situation yeah let's get that 
That means I can grow my capital a bit faster. I'm still going for this location with my first settler. It's a bit far, but I want to grab that wonder and the gold before anyone else gets it. And hey, I can actually get horses as well. So if I start city here or here, I could grab all of these. If I do it here, I can grab this deer. That's three hexes away. Yeah, so I'll do it exactly on this forest hex, I think. That seems like the best idea. Then I can grab the horses and two deer hexes, gold and the Barringer crater. Sounds good. Nice, free technology. That's always good. Saves me research time. Glad I checked south of my capital. <laughs> I totally wouldn't do that in many of my other games. I'm sending my experiment down south. I might need some defense around my capital. I'm surprised I didn't have any barbarians yet. Maybe I should get rid of this camp. There's no city-state around here. So probably a good idea to get rid of it. Especially if my second city is going to be over there. And it is. I really want that Pantheon fast though. So once I start my second city, I might just flat out buy the shrine without waiting to build it. I'm probably going to do that. And here's another horse resource, nice. Wow, there's silver as well, okay. Can I grab all of these? No, I can't. Yeah. I have to split this into two cities, actually. Which is going to be better. So maybe I should just start my second city closer to my capital. And wow, that's a camp very close. A bit too close. And here's another city-state. I kind of don't want to get rid of these camps, because I'm definitely going to get a quest for one of them at some point. And then I can destroy it for free influence. Alright, so I'm going to use the first settler to start a city somewhere here, closer to my capital. And then... I'll use the next settler to grab the crater up here and the gold. I don't want my second city to be too far away. Come on, give me a quest. Doesn't look like I have any neighbor too close. I'm happy with that. Like I said, I don't want any wars too early. I want to expand fast. So at least I know I'm in no danger of getting invaded anytime soon. Right, back to my capital. Hmm. I guess I'll grab a granary. Or another worker. I'll definitely need more workers than this. Yeah, I only have one worker right now. I need more, so let's grab a worker. And I'll just set it back to production to make it a bit faster. I'm actually kind of surprised I don't have any neighbor closer to me. I seem to be a little bit isolated. Which is good, don't get me wrong, but I am a bit surprised. And here's another city-state. Oh, someone founded the Pantheon. Great, Goddess of the Hunt. 
so someone stole that from me. I wasn't really very close either. Oh well. That was probably some religious civilization. So maybe plus one faith from Tanja is still up for grabs. If it is, I'm going to get that. And wow, that's a lot of barbarians. Get out of the way, I want to start my city. I actually have to move on the hex with my spearmen. I want to grab that silver. And yeah. This is actually a good spot because I'll have mountains within two hexes of this city. Which is a requirement for some of the wonders. Like the Machu Picchu and the funny named castle that I'm not even going to try pronouncing. I'll just start the city here. Alright, so... That's five hexes away from my capital. And the next one will be five hexes away from this one. Yeah, that's perfect. Let's just start it here. Good enough. And I'm in range of this deer. So that's actually pretty good. And trapping is done. Let's see what's next. Yeah, writing is going to be next. I need some paper makers. These are pretty awesome. Not OP at all. Plus two gold from library. Because this is replacement for library. Alright, so should I just flat out buy the shrine? Yeah, let's do that. It's a bit of a gamble, but I hope it's going to be worth it. It's a shame Goddess of the Hunt is not available anymore. There are quite a lot of deer hexes around here, although I expected more. I think plus one faith from Tanja is still up for grabs. If it is, then that's what I'm getting. It's not as good as extra food, especially on this map. Extra food is actually pretty good because you won't see any high food yield hexes on this map. Wheat on planes is about as good as it gets. So anything that gives extra food is good. Oh what? Really? Are you serious right now? Montezuma stole my city spot. Wow. Holy crap, that's just annoying. I'll have to kick his ass for that. Seriously, I wanted that spot. So even if I sent my settler directly there, I would have been too slow, most likely. Well, I have my first target for my first war. I'm definitely going to take this city. <laughs> this city will be mine. There's no question about that. And if he's my neighbor, then... I'll definitely have to go to war with him. He's not exactly a peaceful civilization, to say the least. I didn't actually meet him yet. I should probably do that. I need someone to trade my resources with. I don't have anything for trade just yet, but I will. Especially once I finish that second worker. Oh, looks like this is Napoleon. Is this Paris? So he's not too far, and he's separated by two city-states. So that's actually pretty good for me. Yeah, that's Paris. Alright. I'm definitely going to conquer that at some point. And I'm going to get my next settler on the next turn. Actually, no, I won't. I need the Republic first. I thought I already got that. Alright, now I'm going to get Republic. And I'm getting the next settler in 24 turns. I'll probably just build one myself. Yeah, 10 turns. Let's grab one in Beijing. 
I also need will to actually make growth. I didn't actually research that yet. Right, I need to get rid of that camp. I don't want the barbarian camp three hexes away from my city. No quest for the camp, unfortunately. Lisbon wants me to discover a natural wonder. Why did they not want that 20 turns ago when I discovered this thing over here? That was probably more than 20 turns. No, it wasn't. It's turn 38. So yeah, now they want a natural wonder. Okay, give me some other civilizations other than Napoleon. But yeah, I guess you can already see quite clearly how this game is going to be quite different from my other ones. This map is very, very different. But I like it so far. It's going to be interesting. And another city-state. There we go, now I can get my Pantheon. Yeah, the plus faith from Tanja is already gone, unfortunately. So... What should I get? Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Buying that shrine was probably a bit of a waste, honestly. Hmm, I'm not too sure about this. I might have to just finish this part here and think before I start the next one. I don't see any great peaks over here, unfortunately. I can't really get anything resource-based. I could go for extra happiness from cities on rivers, but I won't have that many cities on rivers. I could go for plus two science in cities with a trade route. That's also not too bad. What else can I get? There's no point getting 10% faster growth rate when my growth rate will be pretty low anyway. So that's a bit pointless. I could get extra culture from shrines, but that's a bit crappy. So these are pretty much my options. I could get plus one culture and plus one faith for gold and silver. Right now I have three silver hexes near my capital and another silver near Shanghai. And I'm going to have gold once I conquer this city in the future. And there's some more silver over here. I could make a city over here and get even more silver. So, this is another option, plus one culture and plus one faith for each gold and silver. There's silver over here as well, but I can't really get that. Right, I'm going to decide at the start of the next part. Feel free to post any comments in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.